we go. All right, as usual, we're going to lead off with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I have a flag ready. It's backwards, so no, that doesn't work. Actually, if you fly it upside down, that's a sign that you're in distress. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am in distress. No, I'm not. Uh, I pledge allegiance yes, to the flag sure. of the United yeah. States of America. Right. To the one nation, one nation. under God, under God. Indivisible. indivisible, liberty, liberty. and justice for all. Thank you. Is anybody from the public on? We'll take that as a no. I'm going to do a silent roll call here. Make sure you guys are in the minutes as having attended. Okay. Uh, as a reminder, there are vacancies for a vice chairman and a legal advisor. Um, I think we could probably trend away from not having a legal advisor, at least have somebody in our Rolodex uh, to send a veteran that has a need. Um, but uh, a vice chairman for sure. So give that some thought if you're interested in um, taking that on. Uh, committee chairman comments. Um, Walled Heels is uh, still coming. We'll talk about that under the calendar. Um, I owe you all an update on where they are in the Purple Heart Monument that's going to go in Vets Park. Um, last I heard, the stone was being shipped from India, and that was December. So here we are four months later. Uh, I'd like to at least get a soft date on the calendar for the unveiling. I know there's... Uh, Quite a few family members um, that would like to attend, so um, yeah, we'll get that going. But other than that, uh, you know, overall, uh, like I said, we're going to go to monthly meetings until the summer. Uh, there's a lot happening, you know. Um, Memorial Day, the High Holy Day of uh, in the veteran community, a um, lot going on. The parade's going to happen that on uh, May 30th. As a matter of fact, I just did the application and permit for both that and the Veterans Memorial Ceremony which will happen on the third Sunday, which is, I believe, the 15th. So all the paperwork's in for that. Um, a little late on one of those, but they knew it was coming, so uh, all good. And um, and then Memorial, the day after Memorial Day is the day the trailer with the Wall of Heels shows up in Vets Park. So it's going to be a very busy time. And then uh, uh, I'm looking forward to a long vacation afterwards. <laughs> Moving on, uh, under old business, uh, the veteran resource directory, um, that went out. Um, there were a couple of hitches with that. Uh, the tax assessor's office who gave us the list uh, to mail uh, to 1,500 homes in Norwalk, um, they wanted a chance to edit their piece of the, the directory before we sent it. And uh, I guess in my eagerness to get this box checked and get this in the hands of veterans in Norwalk. Um, I failed to do that and the wrong phone number was in there for them. Um, and uh, it just went out at a bad time for them. So while this is an annual thing that we would like to do uh, with updated information, uh, the big win in that calendar, in, in that pamphlet for me is to have a calendar of events for the entire year. So Nobody can say that they didn't know about anything happening. And uh, um, so that it raises the bar to create a calendar in December for the following year and then get that pamphlet out in the mail quickly. Um, we used a vendor that had been used before, which worked out well. Um, and I have, I have some uh, uh, personal deltas about the format and I will take that on completely. That's my fault. Um, I think it can be smaller um, and it, it was spaced out a bit too much. There was no back page. Um, I could go on and on. So lessons learned for me. It's the first time we did this. All I know is this has been on our, on our agenda for two years now. And thankfully we got it done. And at the St. Patrick's event at the American Legion yesterday, uh, somebody said, so you're the guy with the veteran resource directory and kind of took a step back and was about to take whatever was coming at me. And, uh, uh the gentleman thanked me very much. He had not, uh, seen any of that, um, in a formal way. So, uh, that's one, one happy customer. So, uh, 
it is uh, good to get that uh, behind us and then be, make that a regular part of our business rules in the committee. Um, Jeff, I have a whole bunch of um, resource uh, brochure, uh, mailings that came back to the office. So I'm collecting them for you. So you, we, you can probably eventually correct the addresses or take them off the list. Not, okay. I'm not, not deliverable. So there's a, it's a big stack. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll definitely come and get that. Matter of fact, I, I need to bring something to Rec and Parks tomorrow. Are you around? Yeah. Okay, definitely. great. Uh, let me write that down before I forget. Are you not so early, though? <laughs> what time we're talking about? <laughs> uh, Mid afternoon, two, three o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, like not, not 8 30 in the morning. <laughs> right. That's that's too bad. Um that I know those came back like that. Uh so again, this is the first time and, and yeah. the goal is to learn from mistakes. And and it's just a matter of getting the uh, tax assessors database corrected. And I, I gotta give them credit. Um uh, the woman whose name escapes me right now put a lot of time into making that list correct and yeah and, Lori, and yeah. what's her name Irene? Lori, Lori, oh, touch oh, yep. something okay. like That's that it. yeah you know what uh i'm gonna draft a uh thank you letter to her from the committee also i think uh um she's a big asset to uh what we're trying to get done and that's um making sure veterans know what their benefits are is on the city level and then a bigger picture, you know, financial assistance, uh, all the one pages that Fred did on financing, like the finances rather, that, that was in there. So that was good. Uh, Paolo, do you live in Norwalk? I do, yes. Did you get that? No, I did not. All right. Well, apparently Irene's got a lot of uh, in, her, in her office. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to get yeah, that I'm... and I'll talk to you offline about uh, where I can mail that to you. Okay, very good. good. And uh, this is this is that attachment that you sent, right? The uh, the veteran resource attachment that you had sent. Correct. Yep. Um, and Jeff, I was just not don't mean to uh, to interject here, but I uh, do we have um, do we have a list of? I know there's fifteen hundred names of of veterans that are registered in the city of Norwalk. Is that something that we can get our that I can get my hands on? Okay, so uh, let me correct you on that because it, it's not registered with the city of Norwalk. These are households that are receiving um, tax benefits, an assessment right? break on their house, okay. basically. Okay, and it could be widows uh, because if the veteran is deceased, that that <clears throat> benefit continues um, in that for that household. So, um, and so. My question would be, and again, we can talk offline, you know, what you would want to use that for, you know? Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm going to make a note to uh, at least shoot you an email and, and then maybe start that conversation. To see okay, that. very good. And I just had some ideas over the weekend. Hey, well, I would love to hear what you have. And that okay. goes for everybody on a call. So um, next up is outreach um, from January. You know, I... I put in the minutes that Irene continues to funnel veterans in need to the committee. And we appreciate her doing that. I uh, put in there that uh, Nick Samadel, um, who's now 101 years old, has moved, uh, not in Norwalk anymore, anymore but um, uh, he's in my thoughts and uh, I've got his address. I'm gonna send him a card or something. And, and uh, he was one of the three 100 year old grand marshals of the Memorial Day Parade last year. Uh, one of them, John Kozar, United States Marine Corps, passed away uh, two or three months ago. Uh, he lived on my street, and uh, I know uh, he enjoyed being out there. He used to come to the uh, Veteran Recognition Dinner at the American Legion, too. And uh, good man, good Marine. And, um, you know, just sad to, to see that because the greatest generation, you know, it's how long are we going to have them in our city, you know. So uh, moving on from there. Uh, the military and veteran registry. Okay, so uh, back to how you worded that, Paolo. There's there's something that the committee would has been trying to get done, and and I'd like to see it get done at some point. And it's just a matter of talking to IT and and uh, so the state of Pennsylvania has a registry that you go on a web based form and you put in where you live and what branch you were in and all of that, and uh, it's kind of a good template to follow and. 
Uh, it would be nice if we can create something like that and then use that to supplement the mailing list that the tax assessor's office puts out um, because we may pick up some people that just arrived in Norwalk that aren't on their list yet. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just good to know who they are and, and invite them to events like the veteran memorial ceremony and uh, invite them to march in the parade and uh, there's a hundred things we could do with that list and so i will continue to pursue that um uh, just any quick question jeff so the uh the reason why i didn't get the uh the um the resource is because i'm not registered at, um in the state of norwalk because i don't own i don't own property in norwalk is that something that um, how would I receive that if I'm not receiving any tax benefits from the, the city of Norwalk? So as I understand it, the, the assessment on your house, uh, the reduction on the assessment can apply to a car also. So if you're paying taxes on a car, got it. they can drop you the value of your, or the assessed value of the car and you pay less tax. Understood. Okay. And, and you know, uh, I'm going to put this out there and I talked to Lori about it. You know, um, it's, it's $6,000 on a house. And so when you do the math, say a $400,000 house now is assessed at $394,000 a house. And I did the math on that. And uh, basically 6% tax results in a, a break to the veteran of $10 a month. And so my question to Lori in, in that office is, um, what's the history of that $6,000? Has it been $6,000 for 15 years? And maybe we should, you know, bring that to the common council, and maybe raise that amount. Um, so actually I'm going to, I'm going to put that under new business. That's something I definitely want to formally um, kind of pursue and see what the city feels about that. Um, again, you know, at $10 a month is $10 a month and every bit helps these days, especially, with the price of everything right now. So, um, yeah, uh, thanks for that. Hopefully uh, you learned something there, Paolo. And, and please feel free to, to uh, contact tax assessor's office and let them know um, that you're in town. And uh, I think once you send them your DD-214, it's the following tax year. Mm -hmm. it'll be for this year, it'll be for the following tax year. So I'll let them correct me because I may be wrong and uh, they are the experts, not me. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, and while you're at it, our next uh, agenda item is partnership with the Norwalk Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we want to do a database of veteran-owned businesses. We started one. We have about 15 businesses on the list. And the goal is uh, we want to get see the chamber have an offshoot or a subcommittee of veteran-owned business owners who can help themselves. Mm -hmm. And then uh, have the, the larger, greater Chamber of Commerce help them and mentor them and that sort of thing. And uh, so do you have anything on that? I know you've been away, Paolo, but uh, your thoughts on that? I just, uh, like, like I caught up with you, um, I think last week I caught up with Brian. Uh, we're going to meet this week. We're, we're going to talk about the um, Better Owned Business Directory, and we're going to talk about the, the um, see if the Chamber can help us with some, some, uh, a veteran event um, that we can, we can get going. Great idea. Yeah. I I received a, um, might even still be in my uh, inbox. Uh, it's not, just give me one second. I want to look this up. Uh, oh, you're talking, Jeff. Apollo? If you yes. uh, apply uh, for that uh, veteran thing on your car, uh, it'll, it'll be in effect in July because that's the new year. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, so this is a, an article from The Hour. Um, despite COVID challenges, more businesses opened during the pandemic. 600 businesses opened in Norwalk in the two years of the pandemic. Wow. And that, that's an amazing statistic to me. And, and good for them from a PR perspective to get that word out that, you know, Norwalk is thriving. And, uh, and I just wonder, you know, of course, because of my perspective of those 600, how many are veterans, you know? And uh, so, Paolo, that's why you're on the committee. You're going to get a handle on that and work with, uh, with those fellows over there and people on the, on the staff of the uh, chamber. And, and, uh, and thank you for that. Definitely. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Veterans Memorial Subcommittee. So this is the uh, subcommittee that's responsible for 
ceremonies essentially um they have uh they have formally taken on three new events and uh they are already planning the first one which is the first new one which is uh the d-day event so d-day being june 6th uh, Nauk had three residents uh that were killed in that operation and uh so it's just a matter of taking a pause every year on june 6th to remember that day and what that meant to the war much like we do with pearl harbor um and uh, we have a volunteer that's going to mc it it's going to be at the american legion and uh they are well into planning that and i'm very appreciative of that that's going to be a, a nice thing to have and then uh of course we have the veterans memorial ceremony which happens on um may 15th cemetery visits that morning also um for those that aren't familiar with that uh what we do is we meet up at city hall and have a short ceremony play taps and then those that are there and it, it includes a lot of rtc students from both high schools uh, we break up into two groups and there's a list of cemeteries we go to each one if the main flag at the cemetery needs to be replaced we do it at that point we say a prayer we play taps and move on to the next one and then the goal is to have both groups meet back at calf pasture beach for the veterans memorial ceremony which starts at 12 30. um and so that's an annual event that's been in the city for 30 years so um we're going to continue that tradition and uh you know in my research and things that i've done historically um the veteran organizations in town the american legion and, and vfw have had memorial day ceremonies and cemeteries since his, way back to the 20s and 30s on the world war one veterans have died so um yeah it's kind of a badge for me to make sure that that tradition continues um so that committee is uh running uh richard olson who is a commander of the american legion in norwalk is the chairman of that committee uh oh and um they have selected a grand marshal um Press release is going to go out in two weeks. Uh, I want to wait until National Vietnam Veterans Day. So the goal is to honor a Vietnam veteran from Norwalk. And uh, so they have chosen uh, Daniel Caparell, who's been the chairman of the Norwalk Veterans Memorial Committee for probably 10 of the last 15 years. Uh, he's the vice chairman right now. Uh, he's a Vietnam veteran, Marine Corps sniper. Uh, doesn't talk a lot about it. Um, but uh, we wanted to tie that in to the wall of the heels that's coming that, uh, that following week. And uh, that just made a lot of sense. And there he was in the room and he was very humbled by the uh, unanimous vote uh, that he be the uh, grand marshal of the parade. And uh, so I chatted with him on the phone. I got to have a bio put together. The city has a new communications director coming on board in this week or next week. And so I'm going to make some time to go and meet with her just introduce myself and uh, give her that first uh, thing that the committee needs to put out on March 29th. And, uh, and then I'm gonna give her a bushel full of other information about um, the wallet heels and other things that veterans are doing in town. And uh, it'll be a nice introduction for her into the veteran community as well. So, um, so they're rolling along, doing very well. And they're gonna meet uh, also once a month, maybe once every two weeks in May until um, the parade and the parade application should be out on our web page but i will check on that also and put that in the minutes so we know and for those that don't know norwalkvets.org if you haven't been out to that site uh, the webmaster for the veteran memorial committee her name is liz ward um, uh, she is a paid employee of the committee and uh, by the city and uh, she's done a phenomenal job especially recently really ramped up the social media footprint and that sort of thing. So uh, grateful her for her contributions. Um, still on kind of an open ag agenda item under old business is uh, the new plaque, the addendum plaque at the Shea McGrath Memorial to honor the two Vietnam uh, veterans who were MIA until the 1990s that weren't on that plaque down there. Well, they're on there now. Um, but we haven't had an unveiling and a formal um, presentation of that. 
So I'm kind of leaning towards waiting until the veterans memorial ceremony, which, uh, you know, I can talk about it. I am see that. So I can just speak about the work that went into that and, uh, uh, hopefully get one or two of the family members that came to that ceremony two or three years ago. And I met them, um, to get them to come back and, uh, at least have their picture taken next to it and, and make a big deal out of it in the hour and, uh, and patch and all the news outlets that are out there. Um, I think that's important before we close that out, uh, would like to do that. Um, Captain Brown, uh, is the one that has family member in the area and his two daughters live in California and, uh, love to see them come out too, but you know, we'll see. Um, future monuments in veterans park. Uh, we've kind of tabled that till next year. Um, Norwalk, as far as towns in Fairfield County, Norwalk has only four monuments. Um, Danbury has 15, Wilton has 12, Westport has six. And uh, so the idea is to kind of build out the, a monument walk in Vets Park. Um, so again, we're gonna table that until later in the year. Too much on our plate right now. Uh, Walnut Heels, um, that is coming. We are ahead of schedule. We had a meeting, a Zoom meeting last week and uh, one of the employees of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund in Washington DC was on the meeting and. Uh, was very pleased with where we're at. And um, I, I also spent some time, uh, people in positions like mine in other cities in the county, I now know who they are, except for Reading. I'm still waiting for Reading to get back to me. So now I have this um, email group that is the chairman of the Veterans Council for every city in, in the county. And so I'm gonna share information about the Wall of Heels with each of them and uh, encourage their participation and uh, and then use that email group to send information out that uh, that pertains to all veterans in the county. I think uh, you know maybe that'll evolve into uh, you know maybe they'll meet once a quarter as a group to kind of get on the same page, uh, share calendars with each other. I know there's one thing uh, that I'm going to talk about at the end that's coming to the American Legion in Shelton in May. Talk about that at the end though. Um, so that's the wall of heels. Moving on. Um, under new business, I didn't have anything. Does anybody have anything for new business? Mm, nothing. Okay. No yeah, Jeff, I, I, I do have something. Uh, as, as I drive by uh, all the time, you know, we have, uh, I know we, we, you know, we think a lot about, of course, World War II, you know, Korea, Vietnam, um, Iraq. But, you know, I, I, I noticed we, we have a Civil War statue, uh, you know, down in South Norwalk. And it's, mm -hmm. it just, it, my, my own impression was it's, it's, he seems kind of lonely there, you know? <laughs> he does, doesn't he? He's been there for a long time. As a matter of fact, that's one of the stops on the cemetery visits, or not, uh, believe it or not, because uh, um, they, there's a flagpole there. And somebody's got a mind to the flagpole, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I've done some history into Norwalk residents, uh, who've been killed in, uh, who were killed in, in the Civil War. And then I was given this book, uh, it's backwards, I'll read it to you. Uh, in memory of the men of Connecticut who suffered in Southern military prisons from 1861 to 1865. I was given this by a member of the American Legion. And I'm looking forward to going through that and finding out if there's anybody from Norwalk in there. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so under new business, um, what do you think we should do with that? information there the fact that we have a monument to the civil war uh, where do we go with that well you know i i'm not entirely sure um but uh it just you know my impression was that the area just seems very unkempt and it it's not very visible and it just seems to me that uh you know i, I know norwalk uh, really did its part in the civil war i mean just from what i've read and it just seems like if we could just make it more visible and more more on the radar screen I like it. Um, my first thought immediately is, where's a sign that says what that is? Right. Where you right. drive by it and you go, oh, that's what that is. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also, we should partner with civic organizations as much as we can. And I think this would make a great Eagle Scout project. Um, I know there's groups like the North Police Cadets, which are pretty much high school students. They like to visit. I mean, I I'd be willing to personally, you know, take the lead on 
coming up with some ideas or, or you know, getting them done. I, I really, you know, really, it's, it's, it really affects me. I'm, I'm you know, I w- I'd be willing to do that. Sold. Um, Fred, when I grew up, uh, I, I was born and raised in South Norwalk. And that statue used to be on North Main Street between the church, the other Brown church there that's uh, Flax Hill Road. They, yeah. had reconst- they had reconstructed that for Flax Hill Road and they built that uh, shopping center, whatever you want to call it, because th- that used to be like on, on a, a turn right at that point where you, uh, when you came down Flax Hill Road, joining into uh, Main Street, it was there. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you want to go up, you had to go around it. But yeah. it was much more ornate, documented, or whatever you want to call it at that point. Uh, yeah. And now it's like, uh, well, we got to get this out of the way. And that's what, it, to me, it looks like what they did with it. Yeah, I, you know, if you, if you peel away all the weeds growing all over it, you can, you can finally see what's there. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, and I don't know to what extent the Historical Commission gets involved, but I know, I think they got involved with a Revolutionary War battle, you know, right on the corner of um, Cannon and uh, West Rocks and France Street. Uh, you know, there's a, like a, there, there was a battle there. And I know one of the electric boxes was painted to reflect that. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure how we work that. I don't know. I guess the city owns that property and I don't know who maintains it. Does Parks and Rec maintain it? You know, but basically a lot of questions. I, I don't have a lot of answers at this point. By the um, same token, to, to add what you're saying there, where that battle took place, off Elmwood uh, Terrace, and I can't remember the street that comes off Taylor Avenue. It's now a dead end. There's a rock there that has a uh, ball that's stuck into it from, uh, from that war. Yep. I'm gonna, I'll put that information in the minutes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. On that, it's a cannonball. It's, yeah, it's a cannonball. The wall's still there, yeah. Um, wild thought. Let's move that thing to Veterans Park. <laughs> What would that cost? <laughs> That's interesting because talk about a monument. <laughs> right. This well, is exactly I mean, the, we the Why is that was, not in Veterans Park? Yeah. You know? Well, the city was able to move the Christopher Columbus monument pretty easily. Uh, I'm sure we uh, can move another monument if we, if we put our minds to it. So, you know, I'll leave that to you, Fred. You know, I'll bring back what you find out. And, uh, and, and I would love to know who's responsible for maintaining that. It's got to mm-hmm. be Wreck and Parks. It's got to be city yeah. property right there. Yeah. yeah it's I mean, funny how, uh, to that point, it's funny how no one knows about that. And I've taken kids and other family members and friends to show, show it to them. <laughs> yeah, I, it, um, I'm on Google Maps right now looking at it. And it's the first time I've ever seen it. But you're right. There are, there are trees and weeds all over the place. And you can't see it from the road. And I can't believe it. I've lived in South Morrow for five years. There it is. Flax yeah. Hill and, uh, and that, um, Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, yeah. yeah. And then the other uh, monument you're talking about up in, uh, which is on uh, <clears throat> West Rocks in France, I believe, somewhere in that, uh, where West Rocks ends and becomes France. Yeah. And where Cannon becomes, I think, yeah. Ward Street. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a, a little monument there, there for the Battle of the Rocks. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they do paint that power box, but there's also a, a formal stone with a plaque on it in mm-hmm. honor of that battle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good, Fred. Yeah, I love it. Music to my ears. Good. Um, under Good and Legion, let's see what else we have. Um, I'll talk about this now. Or go to the order, not go to the Legion. <laughs> Where are you, Jeff? Legion meetings are tomorrow, actually. Um, there is a Fallen Heroes Memorial, which is a it honors the global war on terrorism um, and those who those fallen heroes. It, that's coming to uh, American Legion Post 16 in Shelton the second weekend in May. Uh, it's going to be there from Friday the 13th. At 11 a.m. and through Sunday the 15th, and I'll, and I'll put this in the uh, in the minutes. Um, that's that's a national tour of that uh, monument as well, and I'm definitely going to make some time to ride up there and see that. Went to a few funerals when I was in Iraq, and uh, very moving. And yeah, um, what else did I have on here? Oh, there's also a welcome home Vietnam Veterans Day that the Department of 
Veteran Affairs for the city uh, for the state of Connecticut. It's going to have an event on March 30th in Rocky Hill, and they'd like to see Vietnam veterans attend that. We have a little time. Uh, we don't have a little time. That's on. It's two weeks from now. I had this thought to um, charter a bus and just bring veterans up there, but I'm not sure I can pull that off in two weeks. Irene, I'm going to call you about that. See if there's something we can do on short notice. Okay. All right. It's 3.30. Okay, good. Uh, moving on. Let's see. So looking back at good of the order from uh, January, this is a good bullet that I don't lose sight of this sometimes, but a good discussion. We had a good discussion as a committee regarding communication to veterans and veteran friendly residents, you know, that maybe not have served, but their grandfather did. And, and they wear that service with some pride. And the goal for our committee is to reach as many homes in the walk as possible to include those that aren't veterans, um, but are patriotic. And some ideas that came up was an email blast to the Republican and Democratic town committees, an email blast through the Chamber of Commerce, an email blast to Joanne Romano and Tony Boucher, who know a lot of people in Norwalk, and then start writing regular articles for the hour and News 12 uh, in the form of a press release, and then include um, organizations around town like Lions Club, Exchange Club, Rotary, Kiwanis. Knights, Masons. So that sounds like chairman business there. And uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Jeff, um, I, I can certainly arrange for any email you send me to be sent through the uh, Republican Town Committee. Great. Thank you. And I, the day that I put this in the minutes, I quickly looked up the Democratic Town Committee and their website was down. I imagine by now that's been fixed. So, uh, We'll find out who that is. Um, it's Eloise uh, Melendez. She's very nice. Okay. Yeah, she's she's a very uh, yeah. She uh, you should I think you'll find her very easy to uh, correspond with. Fantastic. Thanks for the lead on that. Um. So, Matt, uh, not to put you on the spot. Um, at the Wall of Heels meeting last week, I printed off the email you sent me about um, what you're doing. Uh, with Visit Norwalk and those sorts of things for the Wall that Heals Week. Um, we also want to, oh, let me bring this up now. Um, save that thought for one second, Matt. I want to share some ideas that uh, I mentioned her before. She's uh, the webmaster for the Veteran Memorial Committee and runs the NorwalkVets.org website. She would like to roll out uh, Military and Veterans Week starting on May 29th through June 5th. Um, and this would include Memorial Day and then the week that the uh, Wall of Heels is here. And she's going to start doing on her own, um, contacting the museums in town to find out what they can do for a veteran rate. You know, they have senior, they have child. How about a veteran rate? If you show your Connecticut driver's license and, and it has a flag on there, you get a dollar off or see what they can do. This is a um, even Stepping Stones, um, Maritime, Aquarium, Lockwood Matthews. She also... Yeah. <clears throat> I, yeah, I speak to those guys pretty regularly, and they're all willing to do something. I question whether May is the right month to do that, um, only because while people recognize Memorial Day, they recognize it because it kicks off the summer. Um, it it's not exactly the greatest day in the veteran calendar, right? Um, the one that celebrates living veterans is Veterans Day in November. Um, you know, there's always, everyone always asks the question, right? Like, um, and I think there's, there's a fair amount of debate within the, the veteran community <clears throat> as to whether or not, you know, whether or not we, we celebrate Memorial Day or we honor it. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I think there tends to be a conflation of those dates um, really to um, the frustration of many. Um, so 
you know, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to give the feedback that I've gotten from all of those organizations, which is, you know, they're certainly willing to, to dedicate days or windows of time to provide um, discounted access to their facilities for veterans. Um, so long as they either have like a VA card or they have the, the, um, they have the flag on their license, whatever qualifies them as a veteran. And they've also been very generous in suggesting that if we wanted to do group events as well for VSOs or just in general for, for the organizations that they would open their doors for us. So there's a lot of opportunity around there. I just, you know, kind of make the asterisk as to whether or not that's the right time. I like it. Yep. That's fair. And, uh, yeah, Memorial Day is for those that uh, didn't make it home from the war, war, whichever war it was. And uh, yeah, Veterans Day and then Armed Forces Day is for those that are currently serving. So that's a very distinct uh, um, purpose for each of those days. So um, I'm going to make a note of that, make sure that when we speak about that in press releases, that it's, you know, it's honoring those that didn't come home, but also taking time to honor the you know, the residents of the city that are veterans. I think that's important to put that out there too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then beyond that, you know, you've been working with uh, the city and, uh, and Sona collection on doing and maritime aquarium for cross promotion uh, with the wall that heals and uh, that sort of thing. Do you have any update on that? You want to share what you're up to with that? Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, Sabrina Church is is uh, running point. She's from um, economic development within the city. One of her primary taskers is is deploying a new tourism strategy for uh, the city. So um, we have a retained contractor. His name's Todd Kallenbach, who's working with um, who's creating the new visit uh, visit Norwalk platform fantastic group of folks they get what 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 is really great about marketing the city itself as a place to to not only visit but there are so many facets to the program of visit norwalk it's it's more than just come for a day it's kind of experience the city and understand why it's great to develop your business here why it would be great to move here and establish yourselves here so um what they're doing to support this effort is they're really, um, you know, they're offering lots of different services and we're working together on how we can cross promote the wall that heals um, and really bring a spotlight, not just to this committee, but to Norwalk's kind of dedication to the veteran cause. Um, and, uh, and in order to kind of lively up um, uh, the, that weekend, um, the city is targeting uh, potential uh, events to occur at the same time so that we can capture folks who are coming from a little bit further out, may not know about this event, um, who uh, would go to, let's, let's call it Oyster Shell Park for potentially a, you know, like a beer and food festival um, to come across uh, the Straflino there to, to participate at, at Vets Park. Same thing with the Maritime Aquarium. They're huge um, advocates for veteran causes, and Jason Palace, who's the CEO over there, has had extensive um, experience in uh, working with veterans, including veterans who are looking to do therapeutic dives with ocean animals. So it's a great, great ally there for us. Um, and the Sono Collection is going to bolster their their activities that weekend, and also uh, promote and blast out what what else is going on. So. Um, you know, there we're gonna look at um, opportunities for, you know, combined parking rates, um, just uh, takeaways like handbills of of great reasons if you came to the wall, other reasons to stay, and other things to do within Norwalk to keep you here. And then if you're at those other events, there'll be also opportunities for you to grab something that says the wall that heals is, you know, 300 yards that way. You should really kind of check it out. Good. Thanks. It's a huge help. Um, we're, geez, 10 weeks out from that? Less? No, about 10, 11 weeks, yeah. So we're going to start ramping up all sorts of things like that in, uh, in the next two to three weeks. So good on you and thank you. Um, does anybody else have anything for good of the order? 
Uh, Jeff, I was thinking um, you brought up the 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 whole thing about museums participating in reduced rates and all that. Um, what what is what does the committee think about maybe reaching out to to restaurants? And do you think that um, that would be something that would uh, we can we can probably stare at the idea of having restaurants participate in some kind of veteran week that they would they would give you know 10 15 20 percent off of, of of the of the check something like that yeah you know we can uh, combine that with uh you know matt's idea of moving um a week instead of may to do it in november that gives right. us more time to work with uh, the restaurants and uh you know in the back of my mind i've been in larger municipalities that come out with a coupon book at the beginning mm. of the year right and uh you spend twenty dollars on this thing but there's five hundred dollars worth of coupons in there and um especially if you're a veteran uh there's there's some veteran friendly restaurants delis mike's deli mm. uh, hometown deli uh, places like that that would love an opportunity to uh, honor a veteran. Um, so is that something you want to maybe take on through the chamber, Paul? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's right. that's that, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to move that to uh, under new business then. I sure. Think we should formally track that and uh, and start maybe putting together a spreadsheet of those that are willing to participate in that sort of thing. There's a lot of restaurants in town. And Definitely. I, yeah. Sometimes I forget how big the city is. I was over by uh stop and shop on Connecticut Avenue today and there's just a lot going on over there and that new grocery store is coming in on the North Dairy end line. And that's a, that's a busy section of town. And I, I live in Cranberry. I, I only go over there if I have to it's like a Costco yep. run or something like that. And, uh, but that's mm -hmm. a corner of Norwalk that uh, needs some exposure as well. You know, so, mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, good. Okay. Anything else? Orlando, sir. I know you're in there. I see your picture. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. How's, how's everyone doing? Good. Long time no see. How are you? I know. Staying busy. Staying busy. I bet you but, are. But, uh, you know, uh, as I'm thinking and, uh, you know, I'm working on health care and thinking at the veteran population, and this is something since I, I got to uh, – to the NOAA Community Health Center that I've been thinking. You know, sometimes uh, some of the veterans and, and especially the older veterans uh, have issues with transportation to get to the VA or whatnot. And, and I really would like to see if, if NOAA Community Health Center can become kind of like a, a, a center, a health center for veterans to be able to get their, their services, the medical services there. Uh, and it's more of a, for example, um, you know, I know some of the urgent care clinics have partnered with the VA and, uh, and some of those, did you just, if I had to go to the urgent care, I just show my, my uh, VA card and, you know, I get my services. I don't get charged for anything and I just get my medical services there. And, uh, and, and the reason why I say the health are not just because I work there, but we are regulated. Uh, we have to do a lot of reporting to the federal government. So the, I know the quality of care that they're going to receive there is, is, is good. It's good care. And, uh, and that will help the locals that uh, don't have the transportation to get to the VA to be able to get their services there. It's, it's just a thought. I, um, as of right now, I'm trying to figure out the best way to, to uh, address that. But uh, that is something that I would actually like to, to do in Norwalk. Yeah, um, VA health centers, I know there's one in Danbury, one in Stanford. Um, so to have one more on centrally located in the county versus Stanford seems a bit west. And then Danbury's, you know, depending on traffic, could take you 45 minutes to get there. But um, What's that? yeah, I mean, uh, one in Norwalk would be great to be a named VA health center. Um, that's what you're after, or is that? Well, not necessarily, but at least that uh, that it will be known that that we do take care of our veterans there, and because uh, that is a having it as a, a VA center, that's a that that really is a big undertaking to be able to do something like that. It has a it's the VA as we know is is a lot of red tape as it is. Imagine just trying to establish another one 
when they say, oh, you got West Haven up the road and you got Stanford down the road. And so it's a lot of a lot of stuff that goes into it. But at least, uh, you know, if there's veterans that uh, that once again, don't have the transfer or they have other barriers that cannot make it that that far up, uh, that they have a place that they can go and, and be serviced. All right. Um, so I'm going to help a little with this. Uh, the commissioner of the VA for the state, uh, his name's Tom Soddy. Uh, very approachable, uh, nice guy, and uh, oh yes, he is. The, I'm sorry. No, I I met on um, Tom along uh, a while back. Hmm. Yeah, so he's yes, you indeed he's a great person. Yeah, I mean that, that that's where the conversation should start. Just plant the seed, and then he'll find you the person to work with to kind of um, raise the bar or uh, raise the visibility of of. Uh, the community health center on Connecticut Avenue is a, as an opportunity for uh, veterans to not have to go all the way to West Haven that you can get the same level of care that that sort of thing. That's not a bad idea. Love it. Anything that puts a spotlight on all and brings veterans here. That's a good idea. So um, yes. thanks. I'm going to put that I have on a question well. for Orlando. Yeah. Orlando, do you take TRICARE? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, good to know. That was one of uh, that was one of the efforts. I think early on, one of the things that we wanted to mm -hmm. to talk about yes. was to to ho hopefully advocate for more um, yep. systems to take Tricare. Right, mm -hmm. um, definitely a conversation that we can continue to have. And Orlando, knowing your contacts, we certainly you know wouldn't be against you having the conversation about more people taking Tricare. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. uh, and we are actually we're currently working even uh, our behavioral health team. We're looking at because uh, uh, I think they're in the process, and we should be very closely to actually also provide behavioral health for for our veterans because we also uh, take track. We look in the process of uh, completing our uh, verification for tracker for behavioral health. That's great. Yeah, that's a big win. That's huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm keep on pressing and I'm, uh, I'm always looking uh, and trying to push the, this with veterans because, uh, you know, I know there's there's a need. And sometimes, once again, I, I just I just think that we already have a lot of barriers as it is. And uh, and the better we do, and especially in Norwalk, uh, it just opens a, a, another avenue for access. So that in that aspect that's all in that area that's all i have when it comes down to all the covid initiatives and whatnot we're still doing uh covid testing in our in our health center tuesdays and thursdays for the community um we have uh we have a medical mobile unit that we are actually gonna uh working with the NOAA housing authority to be able to go and give uh continue to get vaccines we're working as well with the NOAA public schools uh we not only with vaccines but we also roll out an initiative for behavioral health, given that uh, you know, a little while back that uh, the for the active shooter threat that uh, they had and the bomb threats that they had, so just enhance a little bit more uh, of the you know behavioral health concerns that our kids and our and in Norwalk are having. So we we rolled out an initiative uh, for to provide therapy for the for the kids, the the faculty and the teachers and other fact, other uh, staff that work at the schools. And that's been going very well. And we also have seen that uh, the number of people getting vaccinated have, have continued to drop. It's not, uh, you know, it's been slowing down. We still have our, you know, Tuesdays and, and Thursdays could have 21 one day. We have 10 uh, another Thursday. So it kind of fluctuates. But the schools have been doing very well. Um, very well. And uh, last week we went to uh, to Norwalk High and uh, I believe it was Nathan Hill. And uh, we actually, we did about 16 in one of the schools for students and, uh, and the other one about 23. So that's all COVID related that I, that I have right now. And thank you. That's great work, Orlando. Kudos. Thank Glad you. I brought that up because uh, we need to get this in the minutes and uh, on the city website so people can see that this is an avenue for them potentially and all the good things that you're doing. It's great. 
publicity and that sort of thing. Good job. Uh, Thank you very Leon, much. Sir. Yep. Leon, you got anything? Leon. <laughs> I was in the middle of thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, do you think uh, it's uh, like what we spoke last week, unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, these, and most of these individuals weren't there yesterday, is the fact that uh, at the Lifetime Learners Institute, uh, we're going to have a, uh, shall we say, a wall that heals, uh, the wall that heals presentation made by a young gentleman named Jeffrey, uh, what was his last name? DeWitt? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and we're making, a, uh, we're actually making that a quasi open house. Usually these are only for members. Uh, quasi in the sense that any veteran or a, a veteran's family could join in. It's going to be a Zoom link. We're not going to be there in person. Uh, so I, I guess the way, uh, what I should say is anybody who needs that link, I don't know what's the best way to get it to them, Jeff. We, you know, it's crazy, right? Well, I have a, an email list of 230 people within the veteran community, VFW, Marine Corps League, and American Legion that I use frequently to advertise events. And this will be okay. one of those things that we can use that list to definitely get out. Yeah. And, uh. I'll and, arrange to get you the link so that at the appropriate time, send it out. Yeah. And then your PR, whoever does PR for uh, Lifetime Learners, has to contact the hour, um, News 12, Patch, all those other outlets. Yeah. Okay. I'll do my best let to help me, you. Let me make a note on that one. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that... <laughs> I don't ever want to hear again from anybody in this town is I didn't know that that event was happening, you know, and it, that's a tough nut to crack because there is a segment of the population that still gets their news from the Nowak hour. However, the hour doesn't always uh, put everything in that, uh, you know, the community needs. So, and I don't know if that's, uh, you know, a conversation with them or um, how to raise the bar on that, but uh well, the uh, Jeff, the, unfortunately, the, the reality, as you know, is uh, when they sold uh, to Hearst, you know, Hearst is really, um, their focus has been more, um, you know, sort of Connecticut wide and, and certainly almost New Haven centric. And you know, I, I agree with you, we've kind of lost the Norwalk touch, you know, it's unfortunate. Yeah. It yeah. is, it is. That's, that's something this committee can't solve, but we can maybe yeah. impact it in a positive way and, and, and any lessons we learn, I yeah. mean, organizations like ours, committees like ours, and, and all those that I just named, the Lions Exchange Club, they can all benefit from having um, more reach into the homes in Connecticut and, and social uh, media. You know, I know some people, they're only Instagram, they don't like Facebook, some are TikTok, and you, what do you do for TikTok about an event? Uh, I, I don't know. And, hey, uh, a question. Have you uh, spoken with Nancy Chapman of Nancy on Norwalk? I haven't. Yeah. And I know she's got a following for sure. Um, yeah. It's very, it's very good hyper local Norwalk news. And, and, uh, you know, it's certainly followed by a lot of government and community and uh, leaders and, and, right about uh, that. and good. might be a good, you know, conversation for you to have with Nancy. Absolutely. And that would help her, I think too, the more people that are aware of her site. I know she does, uh, during those giving days and things like that, that she asks for uh, anything yeah. you can do to help her, you know, um, it's only her and one staff member or two staff members. And uh, yeah. I guess her husband was involved in it, but he passed away at some point last three or four years ago, maybe. But uh, yeah, I'm, I subscribe to it. I get it, you know, every day, you know, and uh, a lot of it's uh, politics related, but, um, you know, certainly feel good stories about what the veteran community is doing should gain some uh traction with her for sure I bet, I bet she would post you know something i really do yeah. Yeah. there's so much happening i mean I, I could write you know a thousand words on what's going on in the veteran community right now but um you know i i guess i could put something together send it to her keep it simple and then uh and then put my contact information if anybody wants any additional information to uh, to contact me directly, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, and simultaneously send a hundred dollar donation, and uh, I think you'll you'll be on the radar screen. <laughs> I think so too. And you know what? Uh, that's uh, that's part of 
what she does is part of keeping the community informed and uh, you, you can't have too much of that. I just, especially with the, the demise of the newspaper industry, but uh, I could wax on poetic for a long time on that. Um, I do not have anything else. Anybody, Irene, do you have anything? No, not really. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, more towards three o'clock. I'll be over That's your way. That's fine. Yeah. As long as it's not 8.30 in the morning. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, need, I need my first cup of, uh, actually, I'm a tea guy. I don't, I don't drink ah, coffee, okay, but, Jeff. Yeah, the caffeine, I've been advised <laughs> not to consume too much caffeine. So. Um, I'm speaking of Nancy. She's very good with press releases. As long as you send her the info, she usually, like oh, nine out of 10, well, 10 out of 10, actually, she she puts puts them out. Uh, yeah. the, the, the hour is hit or miss, but no. Nancy is always good. As long as you have it prepared, um, if every single press release that comes from the mayor's office is there. Good. So, yeah. All right. Um, if there is nothing else, uh, meeting adjourned at 7.01. Next meeting at uh, on April 11th at 6 o'clock. Uh, location to be determined. Uh, I'm going to wait a week or two to see if City Hall lifts some of the restrictions on meetings. And if they don't, I'm going to uh, ask that the meeting be held at the American Legion in the uh, upstairs hall. Uh, just to have a chance to get together and meet each other in person. Uh, there are two people on this committee that I haven't met in person yet, and uh, I would like to. I think it'd be a nice thing to have happen, and uh, there might even be some snacks and a beverage involved. <laughs> we'll try to figure out something there. But uh, adult beverages? No, uh, no, I'm well, <laughs> about, you know, during the meeting. We'll do adult beverages during the meeting. But afterwards, certainly, if we wanted to gather for, uh, you know, something cold, that'd be great. But um, uh, if there's nothing else, have a great night, guys. Thank you. And girls. Yeah. Take care. Uh, have a good night.